Fellow patriot, attention, this is a lifesaver. Here's the untold story of a 42-year-old guy from Dover, New Jersey, who reveals a secret invention that can keep anyone well-fed, warm, and safe during any hurricane, earthquake, natural disaster, or even social unrest, as he did back in 2012 during Hurricane Sandy, when he was the only one able to power his house for 10 days in a row, while the power companies, FEMA, and government couldn't even help themselves. Hi, my name is Nikki Taylor, and in the next seven minutes, I'm going to share with you how to become independent from power companies and FEMA when a natural disaster strikes or a civil unrest occurs. Without investing thousands of dollars in solar panels and wind turbines that the storm can take away in a second. Without any technical knowledge and without even getting your hands dirty. You'll discover an ingenious yet dumb simple method to kick the greedy power companies out of your home starting next week. And the reason you've been led to believe that they are the only ones who can provide you with energy. It's the same little known method that 22,000 other people all over the world right now are considering the number one item to have in any disaster. It's the invention that doesn't attract curious eyes because it's so small that you can hide it anywhere. It's impossible to be stolen by looters when the shit hits the fan. It's the revolutionary discovery that big power companies try to secretly ban. And it is all yours at the end of this free presentation. All you have to do is not let anyone distract you from this vital message. I know that it may sound like bragging, even incredible at some point. I thought the same until I discovered what it's all about. Everything I bring out in this short video is backed up by tons of proof, real witnesses, and my word. Friendly warning. Everything you read, watched, and heard about becoming energy independent is dust in the wind compared to what you're going to discover today. Imagine your family having electricity, the fridge, the air conditioning, and even the TV working while other people will be scavenging from scraps. And all these only because you could foresee what is important to your family. Like I said earlier, I'm Nikki, and I live in Dover, New Jersey with my wife, Cindy, and my two little kids, Kelly and Joan. Over the past year, I've helped more than 23,000 people become disaster-proof. Plus, out of these guys, more than 5,000 managed to kick the power companies out of their homes in as little as 30 days after they watch this short video. After reviewing this message, Frank Patrick from California emailed me with, Finally, all my research paid off. I've been looking for something like this for more than two years. I've heard all kinds of rumors about you and your system, and now that I got it, I can sleep better at night. This should be all over the news, but I guess no one was interested in promoting you. Here's another short one from Steve G. I swear that everything sounded too good to be true, but out of desperation, I gave it a try. I was blown away with the results. Hands down, this is the easiest way to get energy for bad times. And these are just two of the hundreds of emails I receive every single day from ordinary people. Before telling you exactly what to do, please allow me a few moments to tell you my story and why I care so deeply about your being energy independent. October 30th, 2012. A normal day for people in the North and West. A nightmare for me and Eastern people. It was the day Hurricane Sandy hit the New Jersey area. Although it was all over the news for weeks and we knew it was coming, we couldn't anticipate the mighty force. We thought to be prepared. We took all the measures that FEMA, Obama, and the TVs recommended to us. We had a gas generator, enough food for 10 days, blankets, water, and tried to fortify our little house. Then at 4 a.m., the hell broke loose. We were expecting something bad, but not for such an unimaginable disaster. Hurricane Sandy was so powerful that we barely survived. The power was down in minutes. The fridge stopped working. Same with the air conditioning. The roof was blown away like a sheet of paper. The water started to pour in. I took my wife and my two daughters and ran in the basement. Water started to pour in even there, getting everywhere. From my supplies to the gas generator, we panicked. My wife was crying. My daughters were screaming. I felt helpless. I was scared. I felt that we were about to die. By a miracle, the house held out, and for two more days, we managed to survive. After another two days, the storm started to soften, and we were able to assess the damage. I went outside and noticed the entire street was devastated. 
There was water all over. Dead trees plunged on houses, floating cars, dead animals, and even dead people. Our house looked like a wreck. 911 wasn't working. Where should I ask for help? All my neighbors were devastated. Apocalypse was everywhere. No matter how helpful and well-prepared the government is, you just can't get the urgent help in this kind of situation. FEMA had to deal with millions of people. After all, you have to rely on your preparedness. But I thought I was prepared, and I wasn't. The first thing I did was to make sure I had enough food. I went to the fridge and noticed that it was half sodden with water. The only food left was the canned one, but it still wasn't enough. I moved the fridge to a dry place, and since I didn't have power, I went down to the basement to get the gas generator. I tried to turn it on, but it was dead. The rainwater damaged it. I panicked, and the next minutes, my little Joan came to me and said, Daddy, I'm hungry. At that moment, I knew I had to do something. The only thing I can think of was to go to my neighbor Tom and see if he saved his food and could share some with my family. As I was approaching his place, I noticed that his house was a wreck as well. I knocked on his door. He opened. Hi, Tom. I know it's not the right moment, but I'm desperate because all my food got altered due to lack of power, and I was wondering if you could help me with some extra if you have it. Although Tom was in the same condition, he smiled and invited me inside. As I stepped in, I was literally blown away. His family was watching TV. The fridge was working. The air conditioning was running to full intensity. And he even had a big pump running to evacuate the extra water in his house. I said, what the heck, man? Where do you get all this power from? Is it from your gas generator? He smiled again and told me, no way. I learned the hard way that the gas generator is not a solution for disasters because you just can't rely on it. Gas won't last you long and it can die any second. He continued, I have something that is 20 times more efficient than any gas generator. Come with me in the basement. Here it is. And he pointed his finger at a small device the size of a toolbox that was on a wood table in front of a small open window. It was so silent that you couldn't even hear it running. That little thing could power an entire home easily without burning gas or without being dangerous. At that moment, it was powered by the wind that came in from a small window. I begged him to tell me more. Then Tom started to tell me what it was all about. It is a mini steam engine. Don't think about the steam engine trains 100 years ago because this is something else. This little devil engine may be powered by the widest range of alternative fuels, including solar, wind, and geothermal. Steam engines provide advantages such as less pollution, silent running, high torque at low speed, no transmission requirements, runs on various types of fuel, has long life with low maintenance, and it didn't cost me a fortune to build it. He continued, no oil changes or tune-ups, minor and occasional lubrication, and it can run 24 hours per day anywhere, even if you sink it in water. I was literally blown away and insisted him to tell me how it worked. Tom replied, imagine a clever pump that can eat all kinds of energy you have in your house or outside. It can be energy from the sun, steam, heat from your heaters, geothermal energy, and even wind that find a unique way to pump itself in this little engine. Typically, the exhaust steam is condensed and pumped back into the boiler to increase efficiency. A small pump on the engine pumps the condensed water into the boiler for a closed-loop system. Then the engine starts rotating and produces electricity at very low rotations. I bet I'm the only one who has power in this little town, don't you think? I couldn't argue with him. The man had a point. Everything looked so simple and so powerful at the same time. I was fascinated with the device the moment I saw it. Eventually, Tom offered me some extra food he had directly from his fridge, fresh meat and vegetables, enough to survive for three days. Before leaving his house, I made him promise that after the storm, he would show me how to build that steam engine. I got home and I fed my family thanks to a device that proved to be ultra efficient in case of a disaster. I promised myself that I'd build one for my family. I would probably be dead if my neighbor hadn't helped me. Hurricane Sandy passed by and people went on with their lives, trying to rebuild their homes from ground. Soon I was at Tom's home again, begging him to show me how he did it. I must confess that I was obsessed with this thought. Tom agreed, and as he explained to me what it was all about in very little detail, I got